Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and over there is John. How are you doing, John? This is the second time I'm seeing you today. Pretty good. We're wearing different shirts. What the heck happened? <laughs> I, I, I didn't... Uh, I just, you know, had stuff going on. Running right around my house like crazy. Got a little uh, dirty and decided it was time for a shower, so... <laughs> mm. That's my excuse. <laughs> um, earlier I had said that New Jersey is a very deadly hockey team. Um, I still believe that. Yeah. I still very much so believe that. Um, but I'm going to let you get into it before I get into that, before, uh, you yell at me for spoiling all the fun. <laughs> all right. So the Predators took on the Devils today. Shots on goals. The Devils outshot the Predators 28 to 24. Face off percentage, the Devils were better at 53% to the Predators 48%. On the power play, Nashville went 0 for 1, and the Devils went 2 for 5. Penalty minutes, the Predators had 10, the Devils had 2. Hits, the Predators had 25, the Devils had 11. Blocks, the Devils had 17, the Predators had 13. And giveaways, the Devils had 14, the Predators had 4. Uh, shots <laughs> per period, if it'll give it to me. Shots per period were... Uh, 10 to 9 for the Devils in the first, 11 to 7 for the Devils in the second, 3, 7 to 7 in the third, 1 to nothing in OT. So let's find out why. Uh, scoring in the first was Ryan Johansson with his sixth of the season with an assist from Cole Smith. I keep getting used to saying Craig Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, his six and echo his six 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 six. I didn't. Uh, you can't make that up. Uh, that that was the fastest goal scored in Preds history, eleven seconds in. Um, then uh, Colton Sisson scores his third with an assist from Robin Yossi, his thirteenth, and that was at the nineteen sixteen mark. Then the second period, Kevin Ball scores for New Jersey, his first of the year, assisted by Hughes, his 15th, and Halua, his ninth. And that was at the 157 mark into the second. Then at the 230 mark into the second, on the power play, Jesper Bratt scores for New Jersey, his ninth on the season, assisted by Heeshear. 16th and Hughes his 16th. Then at the 435 mark of the second on the power play, Alexander Holtz scores for the Devil Devils his second, assisted by Severson his fourth and Halua his 10th. Um, and then in the third, it was Mikel Grandlin with 10 seconds to go, tying the game at his third of the season with an assist from Forsberg, his 13th, and Johansson, his seventh. So that automatically is one, two, two points for Johansson. Um, then in all of her time, Johansson does it again. Oh, they, they had to, you know, triple his what he did in the beginning of the game, going 33 seconds into overtime. His seventh was an assist from Duchesne, his 13th. The Preds escaped this one with a W. The reason I say that is because I think if, if the Devils would have got an all offensive opportunity, I think it would have been the other way around. And, and yeah. I, I, it's not that I'm not doubting what the Preds can do. It's I have a lot more respect for uh, Lindy Ruff over there in, in New Jersey, who's their head coach. Uh, they're well coached. Um, I, I hated seeing when their fans were calling for his head. Um, Lindy Ruff is a really good hockey coach and has been for a very long time. 
Um, just something I don't like seeing, you know? Yeah. All right. So, um, in net for the Preds was UC Saro stepping 25 and 28 with a point eight nine. 89.3 save percentage with uh, Vitek Vanacek in that for the for the stars the Devils his uh, he had 83.3 save percentage. Um, your uh, referees for the game was Francois Saint Laurent and Eric Furlot. Uh, linesmen were Travis Gorlitz and CJ Murray. Three stars of the game. Third star of the game is Kevin Ball. He had a uh, goal. Um, Eric Halla had two assists, former friend. And Ryan Johansson with a goal, two goals, and an assist. Um, I, I, I see this team being about a 500 team. Yeah. Um, up next for the friends they play tomorrow, uh, it is on ESP Plus slash Hulu, so that is where you can watch it. It is not being broadcasted live. The last time these two teams met were in Nashville on November 17th, so this will be the season wrap-up for these, this meeting. Um, uh, the Preds won 5-4 to four in that game. Uh... Forsberg had a goal. Stistons had a goal. Niederreiter had a goal. Parson had scored his second of his of the season. I think Parson had been up there that long. <laughs> mm-hmm. Parson had also had an assist on the Forsberg goal. So this was probably one of the first few games that Parson had played. He also had a power play goal. Uh, the Preds won that one, like I said, five to four. Um, we'll see what happens there. The Preds right now, as it currently sits, looking at the scoreboard here, or the box score, um, they are on a two-game winning streak, 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. Um, uh, let's see. Um, the, uh, it's it's quite odd because in their last ten we faced each other, right? And we had the W, they had the L. Well, it's quite even in this mark. We're six three and one. They're six and four. So quite even in this marker um, on that uh, part. Um, it does seem like we're playing a bit from behind this season at for some reason. Um, yeah, played only twenty two games, and yeah, their their teams have played twenty five already. Yeah, Toronto's played twenty five already. Um, San Jose's played twenty six already. I mean, we're more than a a quarter of the way through the season already at this point yeah it, 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 it's like okay um we're sitting fourth in our division uh, right what's where are we sitting and here's the interesting part we're sitting in a wild card spot we are four points back from Colorado or three points, sorry, three points, will be six after tonight. Um, from the looks of it, uh, Colorado has 27. We are at 24, so it's at three. And right now, Colorado beat, okay, so it is at three because of that. The Colorado beat Buffalo. Um, Dallas is winning three to nothing. Minnesota is winning four to two, and St. Louis and Carolina are tied. Um, for those of you wondering if any of that would have an effect, the answer to that is yes. Um, if St. St. Louis 
and Minnesota both win, um, they are more than capable of being tied with us, and that pushes us in a four-way tie um, with uh, with that particular spot. Also, Calgary, I believe, is in action as well. They are losing one to nothing in Mo against Montreal. They are a point behind us as far as that is concerned. Um, yeah. All righty. Um, next Saturday, we will have a in the system do going. I know we've been talking about doing it. Normally, we try to do it once a month. Um, in November, we gave a pass on the basis that we needed them to pick up some games. Um, so we're going to pick it up at the beginning of this month and then pick it up again um, in, uh, in January again. So um, we're going to be picking that up a lot uh, sooner. Um, also looking around... Uh, Vancouver and Florida have yet to drop the puck, um, as well as Arizona and L.A. Um, as I said, Colorado beat Buffalo 6-4. to four. Um, Should have been a lot closer than that. Well, as far as the gap I'm referring to. Um, Tampa Bay beats Philly 4-1. to one, um, And Pittsburgh beats Vegas 4-3. As we said earlier in the video and uh, in our other show, our thoughts are with the family of Latang and the Pittsburgh organization and him himself. Um, from what I heard, he was at the game tonight, um, was not playing or anything, but he was just sitting there with the GM, uh, not career threatening. So uh, that's what we're being told. They're just doing tests to make sure that. Um, right now, they believe it to not be career threatening. Um, that's pretty much all I've got on that part. Um, for other news, let's take a look of what happened because there was one other game. Um, yeah, uh, Rochester played Cleveland earlier. They won four to three in overtime. Uh, the Admirals don't play now again until Saturday. And that is a, was a 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah, it's I think. Standard time, 2 p.m. on Saturday. So, um, that'll be an interesting one. Uh, uh, interesting trade happens. Uh, the uh, Hurricanes acquire uh, Zach Hayes for future considerations from the Vegas Golden Knights. He will be... Um... I have a gut feeling in the NHL because I don't see him on the Wolves roster. Um. Also, Cal Peterson was sent to Ontario today. Ah. That is an interesting... Uh, he went on waivers. I was surprised nobody claimed him. Yeah. I mean, he's having a rough year, but, I mean, maybe it's just time for a change of scenery. Yeah, maybe. And and uh, sometimes that's all you need. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what we say about, like, uh, Duchesne when he was with um, Colum uh, Columbus. And when he went uh, from Ottawa to Columbus, he just needed a change of scenery. And then when he got to Nashville, it took him a little while, but he picked up the system pretty quickly, and he's been doing all right so far. Um, yeah. Well, Nashville ends up right now because, I mean, either way, um, this is a stacked draft going into the mid-draft. 
Um, we're going to be going into that um, probably after the All-Star break, start getting into that a little bit of what some of the top guys in the draft are doing. We all know it's the watch for Connor Bedard and Mete Mechkov. Um, One, two are going to be those two. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a defenseman jump into the top two there as well. Um, there's one out of um, out, out of uh, the juniors in Canada that, I, if I remember correctly, that I was looking at that had a lot of upside to him as well. So uh, looking at that in particularly, um, like, I mean, obviously by this point, we already got to start watching at that. Yeah, because um, at the end of the day, it's better to be prepared. So um, there's that. Um, we will be seeing you guys tomorrow evening. Um, talk to y'all later. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville signing off. Thank you for watching.